Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is the second in a two-part city talk on the New York State and city economies and budgets, the policies, the priorities, the politics. He's in charge of more than $130 billion in state pension funds. He created a firestorm over Wall Street bonuses and executive pay. He's the bearer of bad news, huge budget gaps, high unemployment, more jobs gone in 2010, more budget game playing. He says it's time for New York to get transformative or else. Joining us again is Thomas DiNapoli, the controller of the state of New York. He's here to talk about the state budget, Wall Street, Main Street, recession, pensions, cultures of corruption. Before being named controller in 2007, Mr. DiNapoli had served in the assembly for 20 years, representing the 16th Assembly District in northwestern Nassau County. Okay, we're back. Good to be back. Let's 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 talk about just recap last week. We talked about the state budget, the problems with the processes, the shenanigans, the game playing, your proposals to ameliorate it, and we talked a bit about the state of the state's economy yeah. and its finances. Let's now move to some of your duties. Mm -hmm. Before I get to the gore, more gore. Uh, what is your job? What is the job of the controller of the state yeah, of New York? Yeah. Well, it's an office that has a lot of responsibilities. It's an important question because most people say, controller, but if, is it controller, controller, how do you spell it, what do you do? It's, right, you know, it's, right. It's, it's, as I, often, I went on all the, yeah, yeah, I, I, the answer all of those. As, 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 as I often try to explain, it, it, it's, it's in many ways the back office operation for the state. So it's a lot of the nuts and bolts. Uh -huh. We do the payroll, so for all state workers. We, we approve contracts, some 40,000 contracts. Uh, if you're a not-for-profit or you're a, a business that uh, has a contract with the state, we're the final sign-off on that contract before you get uh, payment. We, uh, as, as, as we talked about in the last show, we comment on state budget practices and fiscal practices, make policy recommendations in that regard. We are the uh, accountability shop in terms of being the fiscal watchdog through our audit function. We have clear responsibility, constitutional, statutory, to provide oversight. So we do about 600 audits a year, 400 on local governments, 200 on state agencies. So that's where we look for waste. And, and you, uh, run, you run the gamut from yeah. MT, uh, MTA yeah. to immigrants to film and TV, Medicaid. I mean, the list so, just subject goes areas, on and yeah. on and, and on. And some of those are pure research reports. Some of those, it's what we learn through our audits, and, and then we tease out information from those audits, and then we, pro we produce a report or policy recommendations. But it, it's really Really through uh, that audit function that we, we look to root out waste, fraud, and abuse of taxpayer dollars. So it's a very important responsibility. Pension fund, obviously, is another key one for state workers anywhere in New York or for local government workers outside of the boroughs of New York City. So uh, if you're a city employee, there are the five city pension funds, and if you're a teacher, or a school administrator outside of New York City, you have the New York State Teachers Retirement Fund. But we're for all the other public workers, so we're the largest. We have a million members, retirees, and active employees who depend and, on that. And you've got 130 billion plus bucks that you, you can invest. You're the, you must be one of the largest institutional investors in the world. Yeah, well, for, well, for, New York, for, for the U.S., we're the third largest public pension plan after the two California wow. plans. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's start with that. You're, one of your predecessors, chief aides, plead, pled guilty to fiscal charges. And the Times in an editorial talked about a culture of corruption. And the Times calls the, the way New York State operated under uh, your predecessor, Alan Hevesy, New York's play-to-play -play culture had undermined the public interest. And uh, Loglosi, the, the, the chief invest, uh, investment officer for the state, invested based on political calculations. Bottom line yeah, here. No, it was a, the use of a, of, a, of a middleman who was connected to the previous controller who benefited significantly from those transactions. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you got one guy, 
your predecessor, Alan Hevesy, or you, right. controlling $130 billion. There are only two other states, I believe, in the United States that allow the controller to do that. Is this good public policy? I, I would trust you with 10, 15, 20 bucks, but $130 billion? <laughs> You're such a generous, I trusting know, I guy. Am. I probably don't <laughs> even have that much. Well, keep, keep in mind a couple, couple of thoughts on this. The, the and, and it was a horrendous situation. And, and you know, you have to give much credit to Attorney General Cuomo and to the SEC and, and in the initial stages, the Albany District Attorney David Soros for unraveling this. Uh, Wait, but, g g g yeah. give, me, give me a little bit sure. of the, the skein before you unravel it. Yeah. What was going on? Well, ba basically you had uh, an individual on the outside who was a political associate of, uh, of my predecessors who served as what's called a placement agent, a middleman and would bring investment opportunities, would bring deals to the fund. And if the fund would do the investment, he would reap significant fees t to the tune of many millions of dollars, like over $20 million wow. is how much uh, Hank Morris, who was also charged, uh, gained from the system. And, and uh, the chief investment officer was the, the staff person who had the final say, you know, from a staff perspective on these investments. So uh, what, what's been alleged and in some cases now pled to uh, with some of the people who have been charged is that there was a, a relationship where, where Morris would bring in people through the political connection and then the investment decision decision would be made based on the relationship not on on the value of the investment okay. so 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 the pay to play is that uh, the, the middleman got a lot of money out of this transaction uh, and you know some of this was rumored when I became controller is when the investigations were, were, were launched. And you became and, controller, in fact, because and, Alan Evesey had to resign. Although it was not for this. It was, right. it was for use of state resources of the car and right, so on. With his and and that, that turned out to be right. a minor right. part of the story. Right. This has been, you know. A, a, and, and the shoe can still drop on Evesey, it looks like, reading the papers. Uh, you know, uh, the investigation right. continues. Right. So, yeah. okay. so the challenge, you know, for me then is how, how do you, I mean, a lot of people depend on this. And, and, Come and on. credibility is key. So, we, you know, we've done, uh, so let me just first to, you, to your early point of the question. Certainly in New York, this has been a very extreme example, but you've got pension plans all across the country where you've had similar issues of, of if not the use of a placement agent, we have had people on boards that have um, used their position for personal benefit. Blagojevich, the, the right. governor of Illinois. This one is of the, the charges, paradigm for corruption. Yeah, no, uh, but what, one, one of the charges they related to his, uh, his involvement in, through appointments to the pension fund right. board. California is now going through uh, an investigation. New Mexico. Uh, so so par part, of, part of the point is that where, wherever you have this much money, whatever the structure, whether you have what we call in New York a sole trustee or uh, you have a board, uh, you have the opportunities for these, you know, for these problems. Our, our, our goal has been to make sure under the existing structure that, that it not happen again. And, and we've instituted a number of reforms. And you've eliminated the well, use of the middleman? You know, when, when I first came in, a lot of questions started to be swirling, uh, and even before the charges, and, and, and I, I said, you know, at a minimum, there needs to be disclosure. There's not been disclosure in, in these transactions. And then as we learned more as the investigation proceeded, I said, you know what? Who needs a placement agent? Who needs a middleman to be involved? New York is big. Our capital is attractive to people. We're not hard to find. Uh, we we don't need to involve middlemen in these transactions. So, so we've banned that, and 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 it's worked fine for us. People have had no problem, pay, you know, coming to us if they've got a good right. investment deal. The SEC is considering a ban. They've gotten a lot of criticism not to do it, and, and, and so far their rules are only pending. So I'm very proud of the fact that, that we've been ahead of the curve on banning that. Why are they receiving criticism? From whom? Well, you know, let, let's keep in mind, not, not everybody that, that serves as a placement agent is, is corrupt. Right. So you've got some, some folks where this, is, this has been their business and their expertise, right. and they can add value. For some of the smaller um, firms that want to manage money, very often new women and minority firms, where not knowing the players in the institutional right. investor field, they, they need that to help with access. We've compensated for that. We have, we have very 
uh, ambitious and effective emerging manager programs in, in private equity and public equity. We're, we're starting one in, um, in hedge funds. We're going to do one in real estate where we have money that's been set aside and we have managers that specifically are targeted to promote opportunities for women and okay. minority. So we don't have that access problem you know, that some of the other uh, plans have. So for us, it's worked fine. Pay to play in terms of any notion of, 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 of political compromise or, or contributions being involved with this. The SEC, 10 years ago, had drafted regulations to, to uh, deal with this issue. They never promulgated them. Uh, the SEC under Mary Shapiro has put those regulations out there as well. Again, they haven't been adopted, but we took the SEC regulations and we've adopted them in New York. So on pay to play, on banning placement agents, we're ahead of the curve. We also post now, uh, prior to my being controller, nobody knew when these transactions were happening or how much they were for. We now post on a monthly basis what are our investment transactions. So you could see where our right. money's going. Who's okay. getting it? You got a question. Okay. So I, I think we've done, we've, we've transformed the way the pension fund operates. We've restored cred credibility to it. People can be sure that that what happened before is not happening again. You know, that being said, uh, I think we have to acknowledge corruption is possible whenever you have human beings involved. So for me, a great priority has been in terms of the, the people who I hire and the new talent we've brought into the pension fund, that they understand it is about ethics and about how you get the result, not just the result. Not all those deals that were part of the these charges were necessarily bad deals. Right, right. But, but how you get there is just as important. So we have now uh, ethics training for all of our investment managers, really for all the employees in the organization, but with a special emphasis on the investment people that we have. We have a special counsel for ethics, so if anybody has any question, they know who to go to. And we've created an office of inspector general. If, if someone smells something that's not right and it's, and it's an internal problem, there's now a place for you to go to within the agency and, and, and then the inspector general can refer out you know, to law enforcement outside of the agency. So I've tried to put all the safeguards in place that, 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 that make sense to be sure that this is not going to happen again. That's the, that's the current structure. Some have called for a change, you know, to have a board instead. You know, again, I would just point out boards in and of themselves are not necessarily any better or worse. It depends who's there. If there would be a change to a board system, we'll make sure that that works and that happens. People sometimes don't realize we have a real estate advisory board, we have an investment advisory board, we have an actuarial advisory board. We, we do have um, uh, advisory boards that are, are largely not voting. If you, if you although, listen to them. Well, yes, yeah. And, and, our, and, and our real estate, and our real estate board, actually, they have to vote on the transaction before we can do a real estate deal. So we, we have, we have, we, you know, sometimes I feel when, when it said sole trustee, it makes it sound like right. Tom Denapoli wakes up, takes out the Wall Street Journal and says, buy this, sell that. It's not, it's not that at all. We have a very elaborate. Oh, man. See, I, 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 oh. I, I blew the oh, mythology. Well, okay. I blew it. I, I, we, I we have a different line of a very involved staff process, and we, we hire external advisors who guide us as well who have to sign off. So we have a very involved uh, process. It's why, and I have to point this out, the Pew Center just put out their research report on public pension plans in the United States. We were, I read we, it in fact. And we were the strongest. Yes. We were in the top list. Uh, we, 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 you know, we're going through a tough time now, and, and we're pulling out of it, but we're going through a tough time for sure. But what I always remind people, we went into the downturn in a stronger position than just about anybody else. So we're going to be able to weather it. And as you point out, we, we were at a low point. We're, we're now up. Uh, we don't know the final numbers as of March 31st, but it's, it's going to be in the ballpark of $130 billion, So we're certainly on the road to recovery. I have confidence in our long-term investment strategy and how we have our asset allocation. So I don't want any of your viewers who may be retirees from our system or soon to be to have any worry. Their pensions are, are secure. You know, we, we've, we've had more pressure in, in, in funding them because of the downturn. And as you know, contribution rates have gone up. Uh, and, and we now have a new tier as well for, for state and local uh -huh. workers that right. will, will help uh, make, make the pensions more manageable from a cost point of view. But it's such an important responsibility and uh, one I certainly take most seriously. Okay, we've concentrated mainly on the bad news, so let's do some good news, bad news. Okay. The good news, according to Tom DiNapoli, is that the economic downturn wasn't quite as bad as we anticipated, certainly on the city level, yep. and that... What you've got now is a situation where the state is, let's move to the city, state budget is threatening the city budget. And you talk about, in one of your reports, a budget risk of $2 billion. Yeah. What, what, what is the nature of this budget risk and why is Albany doing this to us? Well, 
you know, as we, as we talk about, always got some tough choices to make right. on spending. But as, as the mayor has appropriately pointed out, some of the options that are on the table would, would have the effect of transferring the state's problem to another level of government. You know, so if you're talking about cutting back on school aid or other programs that the city has built into its budget based on past commitments from the state, you just blow a hole, you know, at the city level. And that's what a lot of the, gra you know, the, the give and take and the grappling is over right now is, is how much in terms of cuts will have an impact on local governments. Okay. Uh, so, so that's, that's, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one risk. of the bad news is for New yeah. York City. But Potentially. It, we'll see and, how it's but, resolved. But you point out some good news here, too, and that, that is that Wall Street boomed. I mean, it's a mixed blessing, and we'll talk right. about that. Right. But Wall Street boomed. The, the money in bonuses was the second highest ever. The state got $600 million in tax revenues. The city, $75 million. But there's a problem with that, according to well, Tom DiNapoli. It, 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 it's not all good news. I mean, you know, certainly the good news is, although we got hit hard by the downturn, and Wall Street did shed, you know, thousands of jobs. They didn't shed as many as was predicted. Yeah, That's the worst of it. What was it? it? Thirty-five. About thirty-five. Yeah, yeah. Was, the numbers were closer to fifty, you know, at one point. So, so there's some good news there. Wall Street came back faster and stronger than anybody anticipated. Bonuses huge. Good news that yeah, not, not, I mean, not not up to what it was uh, prior to, to to the meltdown, but but big, uh, you know, big, certainly big better payout. than last year's losses. Up seventeen percent, absolutely. Uh, in terms of the bonus pool, because there right. were still bonuses last year. And, and now the firms obviously are starting to become profitable again. You know, so we, we haven't seen all the tax benefit of that. But keep in mind a couple of things. For, first of all, uh, some people did lose jobs. A number of people did, number one. Num number two, compensation, although there are still cash bonuses involved, you also have a deferral of, 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 of compensation in terms of stock options. And, and which you can't tax right away. Right. And I don't think that's a bad thing because from my point of view, if we could promote... Uh, the long-term sustainable health of financial services in New York City with some level of predictability. That will be better for our economy, better for our city and state budgets. The kind of ups and downs that we've been going through. And, 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 and we, this was a severe one. But, it, you know, keep in mind, at the beginning of the decade, with the dot-com bubble burst exacerbated by 9-11, we had a similar situation. This is not without precedent. So, so you know, the, going through these ups and downs and the spikes, I would trade that off for, for more sustained growth. And I'm hoping that the compensation reform that we've started to see happen, tying performance and reward to long-term sustainable growth will take hold. That's why I hope in Washington, they, now that health care has been dealt with, that they will look at financial regulation and that, and, that, and that part of that will be an oversight on compensation practices, that there will be a process in place to identify risk early and, and to avoid risk. People were rewarded for doing high-risk behavior, and they did very well for a long time. And then when the high-risk behavior fell flat, we all are suffering from it still. Wait a minute, and we that, all bailed them out. Well, we all bail them out as well. You're absolutely right. We all bail them out as well, which is why... I mean, which they're is making why, this money on my money and your money. And which is why we said it was a bitter pill that, you know, Wall Street's coming back, that's good for the city and state economy, but... Main Street's not back, you know, whether it's Main Street Flushing, Main Street Smithtown, Main Street the Oneonta, wherever. And, and, and that's the part that I think people still feel a, a great deal of anger about. And that's why we do need to just not let it go back to business as usual. And I think the president is right to push for financial regulation. And that's particularly important to us in New York because we are the global capital for finance. We want to continue to be that. But we need this, this, this sector of our economy to be healthy and profitable at a sustainable level, not at a high risk level. Uh, easier said than done, and I don't, you know, obviously I'm not in Washington, so I'm not spending every day on financial regulation, right. but, 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 but a strong SEC and a strong Federal Reserve and the right mechanisms in place to make sure we don't get into this mess again. That's what the American people need to get out, to but feel wasn't, wasn't that we learned anything Wall Street from this. money addictive, that we yeah. almost became addicted to the oh, money? Oh, from a revenue one, point of view, and absolutely. Then, and, 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 but what happens now? I mean, Wall Street obviously will not be the Wall Street it was right. in the past, particularly if there right. are regulations, right. irrespective of the impacts of the market. Right. What about the New York City and New York State economy? Well, how, does it, how, do, how, does it, how does it build something else to replace that? Well, if, you know, first of all, we, you know, we point out and why, and why it's still a lingering uh, slow economy for us. When, when Wall Street's doing well and they add jobs, you know, they add like two and a half jobs outside of Wall Street, two in the city and, and another, you know, or half uh, position equivalent. Uh, outside of the city. 
so when Wall Street is contracting in terms of jobs, the reverse is true. And that's what we're still feeling. So now Wall Street's getting profitable again. Some of the firms are starting to hire again. Right. It's going to be a lag before we see the other parts of the economy where people, are go, you know, whether they live in the boroughs or they live in the burbs and they go home and they spend money and it helps right. whatever, the dry cleaner, the restaurant right. or whatever. So we have to look at some of the terms. What, you know, the, the, I think Washington's been right to talk about new technology, green jobs, you know, uh, alternative uh, fuel. I think that's a smart way to go. We have been directing more of our pension fund money to to both green uh, investments and more in-state investments. I mean, and clearly you can use your money in, in, in terms of policy directions well, as well. Well, yeah, there's some limits there because obviously you have the fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility. responsibility. You know, so everybody says, oh, you got all this money. Well, you know, most of it's in safe... You know, it's all safe investments, but, but most of it's in a place where where it's not. Uh, it, it, it's certainly not at all tied to any policy uh, uh, goal. Our in-state program does have the goal to not only benefit the pension fund, but to help our regional economies. Right. But but it still has to be a great investment. Okay. Otherwise, we won't do right. it. But we are allocating more money because you know one of the frustrating things that I found. You go across the state, whether it's here in the city or you know in in in, in uh, the university centers upstate or. Stony Brook out of Long Island as an example. We've got a lot of smart minds that are developing new products, new technologies, and I hear so often when they go to commercialize the product of college, they go into California, right. they go into the suburbs. Right. Part of it is that New York doesn't have a history on the private side. It's surprising given all the money in New York. Of, of, of a robust venture capital community. Uh, we've been talking with some of the leaders in, in, in business about how we can do a better job coordinating venture capital, some of the angel investor networks that are out there, and our pension fund money uh, in a more coordinated fashion so that that when we've got a great idea coming out of Clarkson or coming out of Syracuse or Buffalo, wherever, that the capital is there to commercialize, grow the jobs here in New York State. What's the, I mean, how does this happen in terms of the relationship between the controller's office, right. the governor, the legislature? I mean, do you folks talk to one another about this? Are there... Uh, well, staff meetings sure. where you... Well, I don't think there's enough. I mean, part of it is we've been in this crisis management mode. We seem to yeah. be talking more about, you know, uh, budget cuts and how do you balance. But, but these are the kind of thoughtful discussions that, uh, you know, certainly through the governor's uh, uh, economic development shop, you know, Empire State Development, we've had some of those discussions. Uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the higher education sector, both public and private, you know, the universities have been very engaged in this discussion. Right. Groups like, you know, the part, the New York City Partnership, Kathy Wiles Group. We've right, been but this with, is uh, all ad hoc. This well, is not but, structural or systemic here. Well, but it's regular. And, okay. And, and, okay. And, 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 and it's something that I think we do need to, you know, to institutionalize in, in a greater way because we do have to think strategically. How are we going to not just react to crises, but how are we going to grow opportunities? Look, New York is still the, an intellectual powerhouse, no matter how you slice it, with right. all of our troubles. And, and, and we need to create opportunities so all these great minds that we're educating in our higher education institutions, that they don't move to go somewhere else you know, for, for, for a job. I okay. mean, that's such a frustrating thing when I hear that. And there are opportunities we need to be more, more aggressive in pursuing. Them. Okay. Let's, let's move to authorities, some of your audits and some of my favorite authorities, starting with the MTA. First of all, generally with authorities, you've got all this backdoor borrowing. You've got tens of billions of dollars that are really off budget and really outside the Constitution. Just talk a little bit about the authorities and their problems and then turn to the MTA. And my fundamental question is, what's wrong with the MTA? You've done audits on security. You've done the camera mess over time. It's a mess. Yeah. So talk yeah, about authorities yeah. well, and then, you know, authorities, since I uh, rode the subway today, I'm oh, already. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, by and large, they're set up, you know, with a, with a worthy public purpose. But the problem is we have so many authorities in our state now that uh, operate really not with the level of scrutiny or public attention that they should be getting. You know, they're created and there they're are boards that control them and, you know, the, the, which, whoever appointed the board of elected officials, like, well, oh, well, you got to go to the authority. They're, they're making the decisions. Sure, I'm right. not doing it exactly. anymore. So you, you, you understand part of, of why it comes out. And some of these are important public purposes that make sense to an authority. The question is, how do you rein it in from an accountability point of view? And when you have a huge authority, like the MTA, you, you know, you've got real problems. The, the the board has been, there's been some issues there. There's been leadership changes, as you know, with the MTA. Uh, the public authority reform we briefly talked about in the other show is meant to give more oversight on contracts. Yeah, but is that enough? I, I mean, it's an important it start. One of these, it's an these important start. These minor steps. No, but it's a, it's a, it took a long time to do. get there. I, I know I, it takes a long it, time. It, well, we, we, 
Well, one of the key things is, is, it, is it strengthens the controller's oversight role on the contracts now in, in a way that we didn't have before, and that's key. And, and, and you, you, you've, you know, that's where so much of the money is spent. It's not just the borrowing, that's part of it. It's, it's not having the right scrutiny on, uh, on the contracts. You mentioned, you know, in terms of our audit on security and the big issue now with the cameras. Absolutely. But that has to do, a lot of it has to do with the fact that there, there was a contract, there's disagreements, and it's in litigation. You know, maybe if there's a more review of that contract at the front end with the vendor, some of what became obvious problems and lingering ones, cost overruns and work not getting done, could have been avoided. So I, I think that's a, a very, very important step that's been taken. Look, the MTA is huge, it's massive. Uh, you know, some argue maybe too big, and uh, I've you know, talked to some of the other day, said we should bust it up back to the different pieces again. I don't know if that makes wow, more, more the sense. Wow, go, go back here, go back, go back, right. go back and Railroad be separate. I don't nah. think that's about to happen. So, nah. but look, the, p part of the problem is 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 the fact that they they've gotten hit hard by the by the economy. So some of the real estate revenue it's not there when you don't have real estate activity. Uh, ridership has been down. Uh, toll revenue uh, also. You know when 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 the economy is off, people aren't traveling. Uh, and then they had this payroll tax that was added, right. which has been very unpopular. Right, and also didn't and it's generate not, the it's revenue. Generate, well, why? Because you you add a payroll tax at the time that unemployment's going up. Right. It shouldn't have been <laughs> too hard to figure out this was this not going to produce the... But so then on top of it, huge debt burden from, from, from past choices. And, um, you know, what I, I think would be fair to say is a, a, a top-heavy administration where some of the efficiencies of scale, when they did merge everything together, they never fully realized, uh, and they really have to. So you, you have new leadership there that's been pretty open about saying you need to do a top to bottom review. We're continuing audits in a number of other, of a number of other areas as well. Uh, look, the MTA and those transportation services are vital to our economy. Okay, you've got, but you, we've, so we've, we, we have to understand that it's an important public purpose, but, but there's such outrage when you look at an option like taking away the student passes to balance the budget. It's like, well, what's that all about? Okay, you got 15 seconds. What do you got in, 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 in the, on the burner that we should be looking for? Uh, in terms of MTA? Yeah, or anything. Oh, Your uh, office. Uh, oh, what, well, what's cooking? <laughs> well, there's, a, there's always a lot cooking. Uh, well, certainly MTA, we, we've stepped up what it's there, and, and Medicaid as well. Uh, you, 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 MTA, there are just so many different procedures that we're trying to figure out how we can make them more efficient, and we want to be a part of that. With Medicaid, it shouldn't just be about cutting the healthcare dollars, it's about spending the dollars that we have more, more wisely, more efficiently. And because it's such a growing expense area, we, you know, we've put additional resources there. So we'll be having more reports coming out about MTA and about Medicaid in the near future. Oh, thank you. My thanks to my special guest, New York State Controller Thomas DiNapoli. See you next week. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.